So why is the press rooting against Joe Biden? Have you noticed this? Eric Bowler is writing about this over at PressRun.media this morning. He says, like, like clockwork, the first Friday of the month brought another blockbuster jobs report. This has been going on now, basically, you know, for, for month after month after month. I think it's been 11 straight months that Joe Biden has had these kind of job reports. Ever since he pushed through Congress the American Rescue Plan. We added 400,000 jobs last month in March. He is on pace right now during his first full two years in office, which will you know, wrap up at the end of this year, um, to have created over 10 million American jobs, with the unemployment rate dropping all the way down to 3%. That's unprecedented. It literally has never happened before in American history. And compare that to Donald Trump, who had four years in office, and during those four years, he lost three million jobs, net-net. And yet the press, as Eric Bollert notes, shrugs off the good news. Politico on Friday had an article, the reality of that one strong jobs report does not snap the administration out of its current circumstances. One strong jobs report? It was the 11th in a row. 11 months in a row. So why would Politico write something like that? Why would any news, why is, the, and it's not, this is not to pick on Politico, they do some really great reporting, but you know, is it, we're seeing this all across the press. Why are they doing this? this these are headlines from CNN. Uh, as a result of this you know, 11th month in a row of major plus job figures, the economy is doing great. Headlines on CNN. America's job market is on fire. Here's why it doesn't feel like it. Booming job, another headline. Booming job growth is a double-edged sword for Joe Biden. Oh, really? Another CNN headline. Why a great jobs report can't save Joe Biden. The Washington Post. Jeff Bezos' you know, publication. Unemployment hits pandemic low in March, but uncertainty looms ahead. Another from the Washington Post, Biden gets strong job report, but sour mood still prevails. Could it be prevailing because you keep telling people it's there? I mean, Axios, this, this is, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm quoting here Eric Bowler. Axios contorted itself by claiming Biden's promise to add millions of new jobs, which he's already accomplished, by the way, was being threatened because there aren't enough workers or something like that. In the Washington Post on Friday, when this jobs report came out, it was the 87th story down on the Washington Post website. 80, you had to scroll through 87 headlines to find it. You had to scroll past, what's the best way to share my old home videos? You had to scroll past the Duke, North Carolina rivalry by the numbers to find out that the economy is doing better than it's done since the 1960s. As Dean Baker with the Center for Economic and Policy Research noted, uh, the unemployment earnings situation for more than 160 million people was barely a blip in the American media. On the Sundays Meet the Press, for example, uh, they had one long feature about how immigration is going to be a problem for Democrats. And another one about how Trump might be a problem for Democrats. Biden's historic economic performance, it was literally 100% completely ignored on Meet the Press. I call it Meet the Republicans. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Republicans, right? So why do you think that 37% of, of Americans, 37, more than a third of all Americans believe right now the last month, the economy lost jobs. Why would that be? When over the last year, it's gained 7 million jobs? Only 28% of Americans know that jobs are up. Does this not say that the media is not doing their job? Speaking of jobs. So why are they doing this? My theory is that bad news sells. And scary news sells even more. 
that when Trump was president, every time he said some new outrageous thing and everybody got all, you know, bad out of shape about it, it was more money in the pockets of the news agencies, which ever since 1987 have been driven by profits. That was the year that not only did Reagan do away with the Fairness Doctrine, but that was also the year the CBS took their news division, which was a segregated, separate kind of company within a company that was not designed to make money because it was the cost of maintaining a radio or a television station license was that you had to carry news. You, you know, the, the Fairness Doctrine required public service programming. And that was the year that CBS moved their news department out of being a separate standalone department with its own vice president and moved it under the vice president for entertainment programming, which is where all the news departments are for all the networks now. I think that they're, they're looking for a horse race in 2024. They, they want it. They, the news media understands that they make more money. There's more eyeballs when it is tight, tight, tight. It's why they pushed Trump so hard in 2016. Let's have a horse race. They just pushed him a little too hard. They gave him literally billions of dollars in free, free media coverage. If Trump sneezes, it becomes a story. So that's story one. Story two, and this kind of parallels to it, is pretty remarkable. This is a groundbreaking new study. That people actually decided that, that this was conducted back in September of 2020. It's been a year and a half since the study happened. We're learning about it now in detail because it's gone through the vetting process for scientific studies. And what they did was they found 765, 763 qualifying people who got all their news from Fox News. And they randomly selected 40% of them and put them in what they referred to as the treatment group. The treatment group was paid by the hour to watch CNN, up to seven hours a week, which is nothing, right? One hour a day, every day for a week, or its equivalent. One hour of CNN and then go back and continue watching Fox News for eight hours a day. No problem, we'll still pay you. This is the report as uh, published over at Raw Story today. At the three, three day mark, the viewers took a survey. Quote, we found large effects of watching CNN instead of Fox News and participants factual perceptions of current beliefs, uh, current events, excuse me, and knowledge about the 2020 presidential candidates positions. Keep in mind, this was in September 2020 running up to the election. They discovered changes in attitudes about Donald Trump and Republicans as well as a large effect on their opinions about COVID. The viewers also evolved to believe that if Donald Trump made a mistake, quote, Fox News would not cover it. In other words, Fox is engaging in partisan coverage filtering. The findings might suggest that the most cost-effective way for Democrats to win elections is to start running their own infomercials and commercials on Fox Network. Yes, let's give them more money. Problem is, you know, the uh, Lincoln Project tried this. Occupy Democrats, I believe, tried it. I know it was one of the big uh, Democratic groups, uh, I, you know, uh, running an ad. I think Midas Touch tried this. Let's run our ad on Fox News. And Fox says, no, we won't take that ad. It's amazing. Fox News viewers who watch CNN get smarter. Now, there was a meme over the weekend, turns out not to have been true, that uh, the president of New Zealand said, we don't have political divisions here because Rupert Murdoch doesn't own any media in New Zealand. But he doesn't. Canada said no to Fox News. Could it be that simple that we've got a poison within our media ecosystem?